discover the fascinating evolution of Starbase as it outshines the Kennedy Space Center. Watch as Starbase takes center stage, transforming into a thrilling mecca for starship enthusiasts and space explorers alike. Witness this incredible development and delve into the world of space adventure like never before. Get ready to embark on a cosmic voyage to the stars, right here at Starbase. Brace yourself for infinite possibilities and breathtaking experiences at this newly emerging space center. Don't miss out on the revolution. Join us on this potential when genius minds unite and push the boundaries of innovation. Don't miss this incredible tale of how Starbase is stealing headlines and shining brightly against the iconic backdrop of the Kennedy Space Center. So, what made SpaceX change their plans? Space lovers, this one's for you. Let's find out everything in today's episode. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of my channel. As known about SpaceX's Starship launch facilities, they currently operate two bases, one running at full capacity in Texas, and one less active one in Florida. However, when Starship becomes operational regularly, only one location may be selected as the main facility for Starship launches. The other base will primarily serve as a testing ground for rocket components. Initially, in 2022, Elon Musk mentioned SpaceX's long-term plan to shift Starship activities to NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, where the company was constructing a new launch tower with all the necessary permits for orbital launches. The South Texas location might be maintained as a research and development center, but as Starship becomes operational, the need for lively testing programs at Boca Chica Beach may decrease. While SpaceX appeared to have secured the battle for test flights from Starbase, there was speculation that Texas might lose ownership of historic future flights to Mars. However, things don't seem to go according to the scenario we thought. The new Mechazilla structure has risen in Florida, but over the past year of 2023, there haven't been significant developments. This indicates that it will take a while before it's ready for Starship launches. Another speculation is that this launch tower might be waiting for the stability of the Starbase tower and Starship operations to gather the best designs, ensuring the avoidance of any risks in the complex launch area, at least from NASA. In contrast to the quiet atmosphere around Starship in Florida, Starbase showcases a vivid scene with a myriad of manufacturing, refurbishment, and preparation activities all over the coastal region. These developments highlight the clear shift from Florida to Starbase becoming increasingly apparent. These things really make us feel the trend of changing SpaceX's focus from Florida to Starbase more and more clearly. Let's talk about the big differences that make us think of this. The most notable, which we can't overlook, is that the second Mechazilla Tower is surely be erected at Starbase shortly. This has been confirmed by Elon Musk on X social media. The next stage of the Starship program should be called the Two Towers. Instead of our previous speculation, we can now be absolutely certain has the two towers at Starbase and it's become even more significant as the name of the next stage in the Starship program. Not only Elon Musk, but also Kathy Luters, the director of Starbase at SpaceX, mentioned in a presentation earlier in December 2023 that the company plans to increase the pace of Starship launches from Texas rapidly. She shared, along with adding another pad out at the site. We have our first pad obviously, but looking at adding another pad, because with the launch cadence we'd like to have, getting that second pad ready was going to be another goal that we have for this year. This is indeed necessary when it comes to SpaceX's launch speed. In 2023, SpaceX outpaced the rest of the world in the number of successful flights showcasing their exponential growth. This trajectory implies that once SpaceX gains momentum, things tend to escalate rapidly. For Starship, the plan is to start with four or five launches in 2024 and then double the count each year, reaching milestones like 10 in 2025, 20 in 2026, and so forth. Of course, with only one launch tower, it would not be sufficient to meet the number of launches. And after each landing, SpaceX has to spend a considerable amount of time refurbishing the launch pad. This leads to a bottleneck situation during the upgrade process. Therefore, the confirmation of a second launch tower has eased our concerns to some extent. Speculation about the new tower began weeks ago, with the first signs appearing in November 2023. These were the parts of the launch tower that transported from Florida to Starbase. The exact location remains a mystery, 
but there are still signs that lead us to predictions closely with SpaceX's decisions. In December 2023, SpaceX's team of workers removed the historic Pad A. This was a regular maintenance or upgrades. Even the base of the pad was cut, indicating its discontinuation. Paddy is gone. SpaceX is considering moving site B to Massey's. Will SpaceX place a second launch tower here? While placing a launch tower just 20 meters from a public road might not be advisable, the area under the trajectory could serve as a base for a new tank farm and flood prevention system. In this scenario, one team might have been working on the tank farm and water pipe system's location, while another team will independently build the foundation for the tower. Of course, this is just what I speculate. But we cannot rule out the possibility that the launch tower could also be built somewhere else. Still, in Kathy Luter's speech, she mentioned the transfer of all engine testing activities to Massey's to reduce the closure of Boca Chica Beach. She said, we're also using our Massey's test site. That test site is very critical because what it allows us to do is to keep our test operations at the Massey's test site and away from the beach. This could also indicate the possibility that we could see the construction of an entirely new launch pad at Massey's. In addition to the appearance of an additional Starship launch tower, SpaceX also has a new step that changes Starbase. SpaceX installed a brand new signboard for Starbase in early December with the inscription Gateway to Mars. This seems to affirm that in the future, they will see it as the primary launch site for Starship, becoming a pinnacle for space enthusiasts in South Texas. SpaceX's inaugural private site has a potential launch pad for humanity's first steps on Mars. It very well could be the first person to go to another planet could launch from this location, must have said. This is really going to be a kind of new spaceport that's optimized for commercial operations. Cape Canaveral and Cape Vandenberg are great launch sites, but they're military launch sites. What's important for the future is space exploration is to have a truly commercial launch site, just as we have commercial airports. It's optimized for Starship, which can transport satellites, payloads, crew, and cargo to a variety of orbits in Earth, lunar, or Martian landing sites. Ultimately, Starbase isn't solely a Mars gateway for individuals. It's destined to become a gateway for humanity when the time comes to explore and conquer distant planets. Currently, the current blueprint involves launching the system from both Texas and Florida, with the latter utilizing KSC's historic Pad 39A. Starbase isn't necessarily a concern for Florida, but it'll likely offer a more tailored experience given that SpaceX has full control over its own spaceport in Texas. This colossal rocket isn't limited to conventional missions like satellite launches. Its innovative design has attracted the attention of various organizations exploring alternative applications. The Department of Defense, for instance, is considering utilizing rockets like Starship to transport troops swiftly to operational zones, potentially revolutionizing transit times. In the upcoming missions, Starship and Super Heavy will lift off from Starbase, heading eastward over the Gulf of Mexico to reach orbit before returning to the pad for landing. The versatility of Starship allows it to either deploy a payload to orbit and return for a landing or venture beyond Earth's orbit toward more distant destinations. Current heavy lift rockets, including NASA's evolving space launch system, serve diverse objectives. Starship's architecture, with provisions for in orbit refueling post lift off, differs from the SLS, which offers a direct trajectory to its target post launch from Kennedy Space Center. In terms of lift off power and payload capacity to Earth orbit, Starship seems unrivaled at present. Following this upgrade, SpaceX has ambitious plans for its Starship and Super Heavy rocket. The company has already secured multiple paying customers for future Starship missions. Indeed, a recently discovered NASA file revealed that NASA researchers have proposed employing SpaceX's Starship and Falcon Heavy for a crewed near-Earth asteroid exploration mission. This proposal was presented during the 8th IAA Planetary Defense Conference held in Vienna, Austria a couple of months ago. The proposal team is comprised of distinguished individuals from various fields, including Lindley Johnson, NASA's inaugural planetary defense officer, renowned for his prior role as the Near-Earth Object Program's executive in the Planetary Sciences Division, Rob Landis. Currently serving as a program executive in NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, or PDCO, Paul Abel, the esteemed chief scientist for small body exploration in the Astro Materials Research and Exploration Science Division at the Johnson Space Center, among others. 
their collective expertise contributed to their presentation on prospects for future human spaceflight missions to near-Earth asteroids, outlining a groundbreaking plan for asteroid exploration. The proposal unveiled a mission concept that showcased the use of SpaceX's Starship and Falcon Heavy for a crewed exploration mission to the near-Earth asteroid or NEA known as 2001 FR-85. In this concept, astronauts would be launched aboard a Dragon capsule using SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket, eventually docking with a Starship in orbit. The technical intricacies were detailed encompassing various factors, such as crew size, mission duration, cargo, and propellant, as depicted in the presentation images provided. According to the NASA researchers, the mission concept involves departure from and return to a high Earth orbit, or HEO, to minimize energy consumption during travel. The mission's estimated duration spans approximately 152 days, encompassing crew loiter time in HEO before and after the primary mission. The proposed plan intends to transport a crew of three via a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, effectively functioning as a taxi, to transport them to the Starship position in orbit. Subsequently, the Starship would ferry the crew to the targeted NEA. Functioning as the primary spacecraft for the mission, the Starship would be equipped to carry necessary equipment and survival supplies. Its propulsion system, utilizing liquid oxygen and methane, would facilitate spacecraft navigation serving both as the main propulsion and for precise control. Currently under development, the Starship is envisioned to become the world's most powerful and versatile spacecraft capable of executing complex missions. Upon arrival at the NEA, the crew would spend 16 days conducting teleoperated operations and extravehicular activities, or EVAs. The proposal suggests that the crew would transfer from the Starship back to Dragon for the return journey to Earth. This return would involve a parachute-assisted ocean landing, a method currently considered the safest for astronauts until Starship is operational and certified for human landing. The cargo carried would include equipment necessary for operations, spare components, and samples collected from the NEA. The researchers highlighted that this mission would serve as a crucial test for more ambitious endeavors, such as missions to Mars or other near-Earth asteroids. This proposal offers an exciting opportunity to utilize SpaceX's Starship for exploration and study of near-Earth asteroids, opening doors for deeper human ventures into space. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. And if you want to support our channel and if you want to be up to date, you can become an exclusive member. So click on our perks through the link in the description below. Thanks to watching and see you next time. By the way, are you familiar Talk Talk Philippines app? Talk Talk is a delivery service app designed to connect more people by delivering items door to door. For more information, download the TalkTalk Talk app, here down below.